Hi, welcome to Silver Duff Films interview show. My name is Michael Geyer and I am here with Philip Hearn. He is a director of photography. He's been in the business for just about 30 years and he has done everything from television, feature films, commercials, documentaries, you name it. And you've won three Emmy Awards, which is very impressive. How did you, what did you actually win them for? Uh, well, the, here's one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, the early part of my career, I, I started off shooting documentaries, and uh, the three uh, Emmys were for documentaries that I did. Well, that's very impressive. I mean, normally we just get to see these on TV. I'm lucky enough because you want it that I get to actually hold it, and it really is very, uh, very impressive. Congratulations on that. Thank you. Yeah, that's pretty spectacular. Now, how did you get into being a director of photography? Well, I sort of jumped right in. I uh, basically uh, was going to uh, junior college, and... Um, did an internship at the local NBC affiliate and started shooting news on film. Mm. And um, uh, it was very exciting. I loved what I was doing. I had been an avid still photographer as a, as a child. And uh, there's something about uh, the moving image that was really exciting. So at that point, I decided to go to film school and went to San Diego State in 1975. And I noticed that. I'm from San Diego originally. I love San Diego. So that's a great place to go and study right there on the beach. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it was a great time. Really, uh, really enjoyed it. And while at uh, film school, I basically was asked to shoot just about every student project, you know, mm -hmm. available at the time. Now, did it come natural to you? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I just had, you know, you either have an innate ability to compose. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, one can study composition, but you either sort of have it or, or you don't. Film is how you used to shoot everything. Now it's gone, gone digital. Yes, it has. And I think I've embraced the technology. I think um, one has to adapt or, or sort of fall behind. And um, about three or four years ago, I purchased a, a red digital cinema camera. So, so far I've done about you know, three or four films uh, with the RED camera. There are some advantages to shooting digital that uh, just can't be overlooked. You know, yeah. like instant dailies on set. And, right. And, you know, and I heard that some, one director, I forget which director it was, but he, they're editing as they shoot. So at the end of the film, at the wrap party, he can actually show a cut of the film. Yeah. I'll well, edit it together know. because of the digital. <laughs> yeah. Instant dailies. I mean, yeah. uh, when I was in uh, Thailand, we were shooting uh, Trade of Innocence. Uh, a film about human trafficking with uh, Mira Servino and Dermot Mulroney. And, uh, and, and she is a, an Academy Award winner, correct? Yeah, she, she won an Academy Award for her, her portrayal of, Mighty, uh, of, of this hooker in a Woody Allen film titled mm. Mighty Aphrodite. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's she, great to work with that kind of talent. Yeah, she, <laughs> she was great. And Dermot was wonderful. She's quite an advocate uh, speaking out against human trafficking. And I think that for her, this was a, you know, uh, a personal passion of hers to, to, to do this film. Before we get any further, I think there are people out there who probably don't know what a director of photography is. So why don't you explain exactly what that is, what you do <clears> in the film set, how you work with the director, and why, you, in my opinion, you help in a big way, create the magic that we all see in feature films. So what exactly do you do and how does it all work? Well, um, first of all, let's talk about the director. Mm -hmm. um, the director really is the captain of the ship. And uh, I see my role as a director of photography in serving uh, the director's vision. That's my goal uh, and my, my job is to is to create a look for the film and work closely with the director and the production designer in achieving that look. And then specifically, I direct the lighting and grip people and the camera department mm -hmm. uh, you know, in, in achieving that. So what other recent projects have you worked on? Well, I just recently uh, completed a film titled Hosea, Amazing Love, mm -hmm. uh, which is a uh, Christian-based film uh, produced by Trinity Broadcasting. And... Um, we, we shot here in the United States and also uh, did a, uh, the film is in two, more or less two locales, present day, the U.S. and uh, Israel during biblical times. So mm. it's, a, it's a period film in, some, in parts and um, it stars uh, Sean Austin and his mom, Patty Duke. <laughs> and, and, and if you, just to help me remember, Sean Austin was uh, in uh, Lord of the Rings which I walked onto the set, I was visiting Kevin Downs, who yeah. directed it, and there's Sean, I'm like, oh my gosh, that's yeah. the Lord of the Rings guy, he's yeah. a very good actor, so I was glad to see him in a Christian film. Yeah, he's one of the hobbits. 
Yeah. <laughs> But not in real life. He's actually, you know. <laughs> he's actually, he's actually taller than he's portrayed in the Lord of the Rings. <laughs> yeah. That is something that's amazing. There's a lot more with the Christian films. They're getting a, a lot more major actors that are in the films. It used to be, I believe, looking back at Christian films, you didn't know who the actors were. Many of them couldn't act. Today, you're getting quality actors and many of them who are stars from Hollywood, which is unusual. Have you seen that as well? Well, yeah. You know, I think it all basically sort of uh, took on steam with Mel Gibson's uh, passion passion yeah they made a lot of money <laughs> money talks <Yeah. laughs> you're doing Christian films obviously and you do secular films um, why have you included Christian films because I believe there's many in Hollywood who may not want to do that because they don't believe necessarily in a faith-based film or the message of Christianity or whatever you're choosing to go ahead and work in those films and why is that my reasons are twofold I mean I, I, I want to work in feature films mm. which I have been and I see uh, doing these films, uh, Time Changer was another film. Which I did with you. I was yeah. I had a part in that movie. Yeah. And I met you doing Lay It Down, playing Pastor Gus in that movie. And then there's <laughs> Unidentified, there's Secrets of Jonathan Sperry. And, Which are great uh, movies. And, uh, and then uh, most recently, uh, Hosea, Amazing Love. And I think there may be one or two others that I'm forgetting, but yeah. forgive me. Um, I, I do these films as a way of witnessing. Um, I believe in Christian, I mean, I am a Christian, and I, I believe in the Bible, and I believe that Jesus died to save mm. us, and um, there are a lot of great stories that need to be told, yeah. you know, either, either from the Bible itself or, or at least stories of you know, encouragement and, um, and faith mm -hmm. and so I see doing these films as a way of witnessing to others. Yeah, ministry, giving back, getting yeah. the message out. Yes. So you've worked on a lot of different film projects. What film project would you say that you're the most proud of? I have to say I'm kind of torn between Jose Amazing Love because I did get to go to Israel and you know, shooting a, a period film based on 2,000 years ago was really <laughs> quite you know, exciting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, and especially from a photographic point of view, we we actually lit some scenes with torches because that's all they had was candlelight and torches. Now, of course, oh. we we embellished. We, a embellished. Little? We had to use <laughs> lights, but in many cases, we had candles and torches that were a primary source of illumination. Hmm. And so that was very exciting to be you know to be working in Israel and it, just to be in the Holy Land is yeah. just amazing. Yeah, and um, so, uh, and that, and, and Trade of Innocence, uh, uh, which was shot in Thailand, and it's an amazing place, and you know, wonderful people, very friendly, uh, very friendly people wouldn't hesitate to go back, or even like go on a hike into the countryside and up to the north. It's like I, I feel one of the safest places to be. Really? Yeah. So, um, really enjoyed that. So I think it's a toss-up between, between those, those two, two films. Yeah, yeah that's great. Do you ever get starstruck with any actors that you walk on set and happen to meet? Not really. No. Um, I mean, I've, you know, having done documentaries, I've also, like, met presidents. Really? Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty nice. <laughs> and in fact, I guess one of your questions is, tell us a funny story. Well, yeah. It was, uh, it was when I was interviewing, uh, well, I wasn't doing the interview, but I was, you know, photographing the interview with uh, President Ronald Reagan. And um, his aides want to sort of more or less shuffle him into the room, do the interview as quickly as possible, and shuffle him out to meet some, you know, ambassador from some foreign country. And and um, he just plain didn't want to go. He enjoyed the interview so much, <laughs> more or less reminis. The film, the documentary was about the history of Warner Brothers, so he was reminiscing about, you know being an actor, mm -hmm. right, uh, back in the 40s and, and uh, 50s before he started his political career and, uh, you know, quite enjoyed telling us stories and then proceeded to tell us a couple of jokes that when the interview was done and his aides are trying to get him out of the room and he's like, I'll just tell the ambassador to wait. <laughs> he's having a good time. He was having a good time. I love it. Finish and this is his, the president. Wanted to finish his story. So yeah, that was uh, President Ronald Reagan. And uh, I was a big fan of Ronald Reagan. Yeah. Man, what a great president. So I look back at my career as uh, really blessed and um, quite lucky to have been able to go to the places I've been to and mm -hmm. a lot of foreign countries and 
you know, uh, exposed to different cultures as, and, and, and different personalities and people. And, and um, I think all of that kind of helps me bring a lot to the table when it comes to telling a narrative story. And you still enjoy it. And I still love it. To this yeah. day, I hope I never retire. I'm <laughs> hoping to do this well into my 80s. Yeah, nice. Well, thank you for taking the time to join me today. You're welcome. I appreciate it. We're going to finish this show with some footage from different projects that Philip has worked on. And to see other shows like this and other interviews, make sure that you go to our website and opt in to our email database. And every time we have an interview with a different actor, producer, whoever, you'll get notified. But thanks for watching, and here's some footage from Philip's film.